Dave and Eve are joined by someone who, I don't know, is normally very popular in the Eve Johnson Horton yard. But after yesterday, when she beat her own boss on her dad's abate, beating Basento at Newmarket, I don't know, I don't know, but they're sitting next to each other now. Welcome up and coming apprentice Mia Nichols. Mia, good to see you. And you. That, that was, that was quite, quite something yesterday, <laughs> wasn't it? You appeared still to be getting on quite well. Yeah. P45, P45 is <laughs> ready and waiting, she's off. <laughs> um, so the, we, you, uh, you come here off the back of a winner, season going great. Tell me about yesterday, first of all. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, he, that was his fourth win this season. Um, he'd been running good races for my dad, and then, yeah, to win yesterday was great. Um, yeah, sorry, Eve. <laughs> so, for, for those who, who aren't familiar, um, Eve holds your licence. Um, you're apprentice to her, but your dad is Adrian Nichols, Trotter Nichols, and your grandfather was, was Dandy Nichols, so you are bred into a great dynasty of, of riders. Your brother's now riding as well and is doing, is doing very well. Was there ever any question that this is what you were going to do? Uh, no, from a young age I think this was always really the dream. I did the pony racing and I was lucky enough to go over to Abu Dhabi and have a winner. And then from there really it just kind of took off and I went to Ireland and things. I've got to confess I didn't realise there was a pony racing scene in Abu Dhabi as well. Yeah, I think it was the first pony race over there that I did. And then from there there's been quite a few I think recently, yeah. And just you just felt immediately at one with the whole business of being a jockey? Yeah, well, I did the pony racing over here, but my pony wasn't great. I just kind of went to enjoy it, and then I got the winner, and then from that winning buzz then, I thought, oh, this is what I want to do. And did, did your dad say to you that he, yeah, he felt that you, you needed to spread your wings a bit, and that's why you're now based in the south and, and based with Eve? Yeah, I think that, and we clash quite a bit, me and my dad. We have arguments, and I think I'm right, and he thinks he's right, and it's not a great mix. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, I think it's incredibly aware and on the ball of you to kind of figure out that that's probably a, a more productive way of doing things, to not be not be based in the yard. Yeah, no, definitely. And he's quite small run business. Like, he obviously has Conor Murr and Barry McHugh and other people in there. So to go to Eve was a great experience and it's going really well. So have you, always, have, have you, have you and your dad always had quite a kind of fiery...? Uh, yeah. Like, it's just we can't agree that we're wrong most of the time. Yeah, uh, that's the problem. <laughs> Um, Eve, is this a side of me that you see at work oh, yes. or not? They're quite fiery because um, <laughs> I have Jack as well in the yard. Uh -huh. um, the trotter twins, I call them, Rodney and Delboy, <laughs> when they're being really <laughs> naughty. But they're, um, they're they're quite fiery. Okay, uh, but clearly the family talent is there. Oh yeah, they, they ride really well. They're doing, they're, and they're real grafters. Um, that's very Nichols family trained, so they're very hard working. Um, and they love their horses, so that's great. So what I want to know is yesterday, how you let this happen. You've got a horse called Basento, quite a nice horse. You are beaten by your own apprentice. Um, I actually I genuinely thought that Abate probably got to the top of his handicap for this year. Um, I thought we would beat him. I thought he'd give us a nice turn to the race, which he did. And we then did well, have... those your instructions? And then he had a nice... Uh, uh, we did have the beating of him. And then, unfortunately, Mia got another tune out of him, which is rude. <laughs> I was so like, put your hands down now, Mia, that's enough. Um, so, yeah, it was good. And so did you, did you know who was coming? Could you yeah, sense I who did, was coming? I did see the silks when they got in front, and then I just started screaming. I think everyone heard me start screaming. And then he just found an extra bit just before the line. And William Buick, unable to match your prowess in the finish here, clearly... He's not worth seven pounds, is he? Not on this occasion, but I think on most occasions <laughs> he is. <laughs> what does it take then, Eve, for Mia to make it to the next level? Um, I think she needs to get stronger. Um, look at Holly Doyle. Holly went from being a very good apprentice and she put herself in that gym and she is really, really strong. And I think Mia needs to do that as well. Uh, she needs to... She's very good on sprinters because... Um, Trotter has a lot of those, and she needs just to get her timing better on the over longer distances. Having said that, she won three for me on Bassinet, and that was over further. So she is getting there, um, but it's just you know what you, you ride what you know, mm. and you need to broaden your base a bit more. Yeah. That's all. And what do you and how do you feel about the way the way things are going? 
Yeah, I think things are going great, but there obviously still is a lot of things to improve on, like my strength and fitness, and over a longer distance, because I have been riding a lot for my dad, and he does just have the sprinters, mm -hmm. and most of them go from the front. And, yeah, it is great, but like you said, I do need to work on my longer distance horses, and Bassinet did teach me a lot, so I'm very grateful for him as well. What did he teach you? Um, he taught me, obviously I had my first winner, and when I did start first riding him, mm -hmm. I was getting the pace and a few things wrong on him, and over the times that I rode him, I think my timings did get better, and there was a lot of things that did improve, like my whole position in riding, so I was very grateful for him. Tell me what it was like growing up in a, in a family like yours, with not just your dad, but your, your granddad as well, Dandy, who was a, a complete one-off, a complete one-off. Yeah, no, it was great. Like, my granddad's yard was based literally, like, down the road from my dad. So every time after school, I'd go down and I'd help feed the horses. And it was great, yeah. He was a very inspirational person. And it's just a shame that he's not here to see what's happening now. But, yeah. Um, tell, tell me a little bit more more about him, because we got to see the the sort of public face, if, if you like. We didn't sort of get to see see what he was like at home. And Yeah, he, was very, he looked after all of us very well, like... I lived down there quite a lot because I just used to go down all the time. He looked after me very well. He let me ride the racehorses and stuff around. He had like little canters that I used mm -hmm. to go around. Yeah, he was a great character. Well, even when you were in, like really, really young? Yeah, I just used to sit on them and walk around the yard, pull the syrups up, try and stand up, but my legs weren't very long enough, so it didn't really... <laughs> but yeah, no, he was great. And even in, in those days, did you think this was, a, this was a possibility? Did you think, yeah, this is what I can do? Yeah, definitely. I think being brought up around them, I kind of thought this was it. I did try like gymnastics and things like that, but it never really gave me the buzz of what being around the horses did. Were you good? Yeah, I'd, I'd say I was good, <laughs> but I think there's a few opinions. But you, you were a decent gymnast? Yeah, I think if I'd stayed at it, I probably would have gone to like the British squad. But That'll do. Oh, no, I'd rather be with race horses. OK, so how have you found the move? The move south. How was that? I think it's great. Yeah, I love it down south. The atmosphere is a bit different from my dad's because his is obviously a very small yard and it's only just family and friends. But being down south is great. The lads in the waiting room are really helpful, help me out and stuff. And coming with your brother? Yeah, that's an experience in itself, working with my brother. Um, he was down south with DJ Jeffries for the winter with the jumps and he only come for like three days just to ride out and he told me, he was like, oh, I'm going to get a job here. And I was like, no, you're not. And then, yeah, now I'm working with him. It's an experience in itself. Tell me a bit more. I'm intrigued. Oh, he's just very cheeky and he doesn't stop talking all the time. So you're, he's nothing like you, then? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's his kind of grand plan? Um, he's obviously amateur at the minute and yeah. he's had a few winners for my dad and outside rides, but I think he he's enjoying it just having the ride now and again. But... There was talk of him wanting to go apprentice because he's still quite light, but he is quite a bit taller than me. So whether he grows again is probably the question, really. And have you always been quite competitive between you? Has there been a, um, a bit of... Or not really? He wasn't always really interested in racing. He was kind of football. Mm -hmm. And then when he went to GJ's, he kind of fell in love with it from there, really. So he's not really been in racing all that long, just since he went to GJ's. So do you, is there a bit of you that thinks, well, hang on a minute, this is this is kind of my patch? Yeah, but now now he's here, it's OK. I did first think when he came, I was like, oh, this isn't going to work out at all. But no, we got on really well. But the competitive side will start coming out if he keeps trying to take my rides off my dad. And are you, are you living together as well? Uh, we li both live on site, but in different houses, so uh -huh. I don't have to be with him 24-7, which is a relief. Yeah, that sounds crucial. Well, yeah, yeah, they're separate, separate <laughs> yeah. houses. <laughs> Apparently, Jack does the co Jack does the cooking for quite a lot of the stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I keep saying, "Oh, is me looking after you?" No, I'm looking after her. <laughs> he, lo <laughs> he looks after everybody. Well, it does a bit of cooking. He likes cooking, doesn't he? Yeah, he thinks he's a chef, so yeah. we just let him. Mind cook. you, he thinks he's an expert at everything. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, there's, there's clearly a good a good strong sense of self confidence running through running through all of you, which is what you need to to make it in this in this industry for sure. Um, Eve, how important is it for you to have young, talented riders coming up as part of your team? Not just to be able to call on at the races, but to be riding it's, important work. It's really work important and... to have good riders and mm. to have... And it's great at the moment, we've got a young team, so they all get on well, they can 
because uh, we live a bit outside of a mm. centre, so it's we've got our, our own community, and it's really good that they're uh, quite a lot of the same age group. And um, I've just got another apprentice coming up behind me, so she's got to get on and get off a seven pound claim, so that Ollie can get onto his seven pound claim. Okay, so you do you do you just do you feel that little bit of it, you know, not pressure is the wrong word, but do you do you feel that little bit of um, you know impetus to, to keep going because you've got somebody coming up behind you? Yeah, no, definitely. It's great that Ollie's just recently passed his, but I feel like the pressure's applied a bit more now that there's someone coming up behind me. Okay, and you're on 16. Is it 16? 17. 17. Yesterday. Is that is that 17 yeah. yesterday? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. It won't be long, will it? Is it 20, no. isn't it? 20. Yeah. 20. Yes. Yeah. So you'll be you'll be out there on the seven pound claims this year. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, and and for you, Eve, do, do you want Mia to keep her claim? You're through the winter as long as well. you don't want her to run through a claim too quickly. Is no. that important? Uh, well, I just think it's not great. I think um, it's it's a real pivotal point when you lose your claim. And so I think running through it too quickly would be a mistake. So you've got to kind of time it just right. Yeah, absolutely. And is there any mileage in going abroad and doing something through the... Mia's going to go to the States for six weeks, I think, in November, yeah. mm -hmm. and then come back and try and get... and then start in, in January, February, riding on the all-weather. Okay, so that just kind of keeps a little bit up your sleeve. Yeah. And then you can really hit mm. the ground running. That's the plan. What has been the best part of this experience so far for you? What have you got the most satisfaction from? Probably just from when I first started on Miss Metropolitan to come in here now, the improvement in my overall riding. I've got to thank George Baker, really, because he puts in a lot of time to help me overall. But, no, just the whole, really, atmosphere and riding the winners is obviously mm. great, but I think just the overall improvement, really, in my riding that I've seen, I think that'd probably be it. And to what extent um, do you look at somebody like Holly Doyle and think, well, yeah, if she can do that, I can do that? Yeah, no, I look at her and she is probably my role model because obviously she's doing great for the women. Mm -hmm. But as Eve said, I do need to get stronger and fitter as a whole. So that's probably my main goal, to be to where she is, I've just got to take little steps and just tick things off as they come. And have you got a pretty clear idea in your own mind how you do that? Is the, is the training there for you now? So yeah, not no, just the riding, but also the... Yeah, there's Oaksley House, which is great, and go see George every week and speak to him and go through my rides, and obviously riding out with Eve helps. So there's a, everything's there. I've just got to keep at it and keep going. Tell me about George Baker and why he's a good coach. Everyone thanks George Baker. <laughs> he, no, he really is great. I ring him before every ride. We go through it and talk about how it's going to be ridden, and then I'll ring him after, and he'll know if if I know when I've done it wrong, and he'll know because I just say, "Oh, that didn't go great," and then I'll go in and see him, and we'll go through it, watch it, and then go on the simulator and find out what's going well and what isn't going so well. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.